Let's have a look at what's new in WordPress 6.5. Hello there, my name is Bud Krause for InstaWP. And first, let's look at the big picture of what is going on. This is going to be the first of three major releases for 2024, and major it certainly is. This opens the door to Gutenberg Phase 3, that's the collaboration phase, and the redesign of the WP admin itself. We really won't see this in full force for about six months. This is a very technical release with changes for everyone. If you have been following along with the Gutenberg plugin, this incorporates many of the changes from Gutenberg plugin 6.8 to Gutenberg plugin version 17.7. This release also includes many performance, security, and accessibility improvements. For example, one of the performance enhancements is in how the page and post editor load. Now, for you developers, there are many changes that you can hook onto. There is continued work for the Interactivity API which was first introduced in WordPress 6.4. What's great about this API is that it enables dynamic interactions like shared data across various blocks without having to reload pages. Also introduced in WordPress 6.4 was the Blockhook API, and there are some new features here as well. In 6.5, you now have the ability to insert hooked blocks into layout elements that do have user modifications, removing a prior restriction to using hook blocks in templates, template parts, and patterns. In this version of WordPress, there is a new block bindings API, which is a real time saver because you don't have to create a custom block anymore. You can just use this API to connect, let's say a core block like a paragraph to post metadata. Work is also continued on the user block editing mode, which deals a lot with block locking. There's improved method for script handling, and there's new WP admin notification functionality. Now for the site builders, there are many changes. I can't show you all of them. Let's start with the list of the things I'm not going to show you, and then I'll talk about the things I am going to show you. First, there is shadow support now for more blocks, and that is the CSS box shadow property, of course. You can now add background images to the group block, not just the cover block. And speaking of the cover block, there is now a aspect ratio control in the cover block settings which fixes an issue that deals with how the cover block displays in mobile devices. There's now support for the new image format AVIF, but be careful not all browsers support AVIF yet. Block style properties are now available for the blocks found in classic themes. And speaking of classic themes, there's now a patterns link in the appearance section. And this is gonna give you the ability to better access and organize your patterns when using a classic theme. And there's also an easier way now to change your site icon. So what exactly am I going to be demonstrating? Well, mostly things that you're going to see in the site editor. Of course, the site editor is only available to block themes. First, there's the new and long awaited font library. There are revisions. Yes, revisions are coming to WordPress. There is enhanced views for the site editor. I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. And of course, the quality of life enhancements that comes to every major release. Now for my demonstration, of course, I'm going to show you WordPress 6.5 and I'm going to be using the 2024 theme. So let's have a look. I'm starting with the font library for good reason. It's one of the most widely expected and anticipated changes to WordPress going back the last two years. So for this demonstration, I have to use a block theme. And of course, I am using 2024. 
It's the only kind of theme that will support the inclusion of the font library. So we're going to go over here to Appearance, Edit. We're going to go into Styles, click over here. And then right over here, I'm going to go into Styles, like so. And now you can see when I click on Topography, I have something that's brand new, this font section over here. Now, these are the fonts that came with the 2024 theme. But now I can add my own fonts. Let's see how that's done. I'm going to click over here. And in this model, you have all the things that you're going to need to add fonts. And there's two ways to do this. One is to install your own fonts, which we'll get to in a second. Or we can install fonts like this, the Google Fonts. I'm just going to install the Google Fonts application. Now, you only have to do this once. So we're going to do this just at the beginning, and that's all there's to it. Now, I'm going to search for a font in Google. Now, Google Fonts, well, I think there's about 900 of them or so. So you can go to the Google Fonts site and check out what fonts are available. I know the one I want to use is Roboto, which is very popular. I search for that, and you can see here are all the different Roboto fonts. Notice right over here, this has, well, let's just take a look. I click on this, and I see all the variations of the Roboto font. I just want, let's say, this font over here with a 500 weight. Now I'm going to install the font, and I'm going to click this, and I'm going to go back to installed fonts, and now we see Roboto as an installed font, which means I can use that throughout my site. What's happening when you're using these fonts, whether it's a Google font or your own font, those are font files that will be uploaded to a new directory in your WordPress installation. It's called the fonts directory located within the WP content subdirectory. Now I'm going to go over here. Now I can either drag or drop the font file in here, or I can just search for it on my computer. Here are five of them that I've downloaded from different font foundries. Let's just take this one over here and I'm going to choose that. And it's now downloaded for use. If I want to use another one, I just have to go back here and let's just try this one over here. And now that one has been downloaded. So let's look at the library itself here. Now we see here are the three installed fonts. And of course we have the fonts that came with the theme. Let's have a look at how they can be used. I'm going to click out of here. And I see now the fonts that I've just installed. They're right over here, but now I'm going to use them. And here's how I'm going to do that. Now, I like to use the style book when I apply fonts that go across the entire site. So I'm going to click on the style book icon. And let's just go over here to the paragraph. And I select the paragraph. And for this, I'm going to choose, here's my topography fonts. And here are all the fonts. Now, I'm going to use a font that I normally wouldn't use for copy on a site, but you'll see why in a second. I just want to make sure I'm going to see this. It'll really show up. Okay. Let's save this. And let's go have a look. I want to refresh the page. Okay, good. The font shows up. I'd never use this font except for demonstration purposes. But what happens if I uninstall a font? So here are all my fonts. And I want to uninstall Kalen over here. So I can either click over here to fonts or I can click right over here. I think I'm going to do it this way. And you can see all of my installed fonts. This is the one I want to remove. So I'm just going to click over here. Now down over here, it says delete. So I'm going to click delete. And I do want to delete this. Okay. Now I'm going to close out of here. And this font is gone. So you can see, you can install your own fonts, let's say from Adobe fonts or other font foundries. Or you can use the Google fonts. Either way, it's easy to install and uninstall. One of the more significant changes that you'll find in WordPress 6.5 are revisions. 
you can now roll back changes made to your styles, template, template parts, and patterns with revisions. Let me show you how this works with styles. So here I am in the site editor. I'm going to go to styles. It works the same way with template, template parts, and patterns. So once you understand how it works here, you understand how it works everywhere. And I'm going to go over into the style book. Like so. I don't have to go into the style book, but I tend to do it that way. And then right over here, this is the icon I need to find, which is the clock icon. And that signifies time, of course. And here are all the changes I've made over time, with the most recent ones being at the top. And you can see two minutes ago and so forth. Now, if I need to go back to the beginning of time, I could just go over here. And you can see on March 11th, that's when I did my first change. The changes are registered when you hit the Save button, so just keep that in mind. Let's go back to where I was a second ago. And I'm going to go back to this earlier version right over here. And before I click on anything, I just want you to note that if there were other users working on the design, their names would be registered over here, except I'm the only one doing this, so you just see my name over here. And I'm going to click over here two minutes ago, and that's what it looked like. And you see all the changes that were made. In fact, what I did was just change the style variation, but it affected all these different elements. If I like this, that is, if I want to go back to this one, then I am going to just click Apply. And yeah, there aren't really any changes that I made, so that's okay. And now I'm good to go. And if I go out to here, you'll see that this is what I just changed over here. If I go back to four minutes ago, you can see that's what it was in a slightly earlier version. So that's really all there is to revisions. What's really nice about it is that you can now easily roll back your changes made to style, template, template parts, and patterns in WordPress 6.5. We don't need to wait to the future to see what the WP admin in WordPress might look like. So right over here in the site editor, I'm going to go to pages and I'm going to go to manage all pages. And here's a list of my pages. This is very different than what we've seen throughout the history of WordPress. This is a very clean look. We've got the title of the page, the author, the status, whether it's been published or not, the link to view the page, to delete the page. Over here with these three dot options, we can edit the page or we can look at revisions. And since we just looked at revisions, well, let's have a look. This is the view that we've seen of page and post revisions from the beginning of time. And I do suspect that this is something that will be worked on and we're going to see some changes here in the near future. And we can see that we jumped out of the site editor. So let's go back into the site editor. And this time we're going to go to templates. And there have been a lot of changes in the template views right over here. So manage all templates. So let's have a look at how this works. We've got some filters up over here. You've got search. You've got, let's say, add filter over here. Not much yet going on. If I click on author, I can see author is. I'm going to just choose me. And that's the template that I created. And I am going to reset. So we can go back to that default view. And we're going to skip over bulk edit. Not much is really going on there yet. Right over here in the slider button, I'm going to click this. And we can see that we can change the view from table to grid. And when you do that, you get this nice look here with these thumbnail images for each template. The only problem with this right now is that there's no way to save this view. So that if I navigate away from this page or reload the page, this is going to go away, and I'm going to go back to this view over here, the default view. So I would be looking at this. I do suspect that is something that is absolutely going to change in the near future so that each user can create their own template views. Now, go back over here. We could also sort by ascending, descending order of the templates, ascending, descending order for the author. And we can go over here to fields. Oh, I'm going to just click on this for preview. So now I'm going to get a nice little thumbnail image next to each template. 
And I'm going to just click out of there. Now, one last thing we can set is right over here. Let's click on this and we can see the number of templates we want to display on our page. Right now it's 20. If I click on 10, you can see we get this little pagination feature down over here because I have more than 10 templates in my theme. The last thing I want to show you is down over here. Let's take a look at patterns. First, let's look at manage template parts. This is very similar to what we just saw, but it's just not as complete as what we saw in the template page. And one other thing I want to see is over here. We can go to patterns again, and this time we are going to look at manage my patterns. And this is something that really hasn't changed yet. But I suspect that all these views, whether it's pages, patterns, templates, template parts, will all be standardized and become very much a part of the future of the WP Admin. With every major release of WordPress, there's always quality of life enhancements that make working with WordPress a lot easier. So let me go over some of the significant ones in WordPress 6.5. First one I'm going to show you is right over here in the options, you see that there's different modes of working with WordPress. You've seen this before. But now if I go down to preferences, and these two tabs, I think they're either new or revised. One of them is appearance. And you can see these are the same modes that we just saw over here. I think eventually this is gonna be replaced in favor of what you see here. So you can change these different modes. I am going to look over here at accessibility. Let's take a look at interface. Now you see right over here I have these icons and if I don't want those and I'd rather have the words that are behind those icons I could toggle that on just like this. I'm going to revert back to the icons themselves. Now something else that's been improved in this version of WordPress is the list view. Let's have a look. One of the things you can do is now rename virtually all these blocks so that it gives you some more meaningful information other than just the name of the block. For example, if I go into columns right over here and I want to click on the three dots and you'll see rename and I can supply my own name now for that. Let's say first columns. I'll just say first cows. Now that's not a very practical name. You can see it right over here. Okay, it doesn't really signify all that much information, but you can change it to anything you want that makes it easier to remember what the block is. If you want to, for example, change your mind about this, you don't have to click anymore just over on the three dots. You can right click anywhere here. So I'm gonna do that right now. And it gives me the options and I'm going to go back to rename. I'm just gonna take that out and save it. And you can see I just went back to the columns label. And that's fine. One other thing that got improved in list view, let's close this up, that's been a big improvement is the drag and drop functionality. So it used to be really hard, let's say, to take the last block and move it into place for the first. It was just never quite working right. Now it's just real smooth. I really like that a lot. It's just a lot easier to move things around than what we had before. Let me move that back to where I had it just by, well, let's just drag and drop. Much better. And speaking of dragging and dropping, there's now a new way to create galleries by dragging and dropping images. I really like this one, let me show you. Let's get out of here, okay? And let's use some space down here. Now what I'm about to do is just drag two images, let's go over here, drag one right into place. Now I could drag this right from my desktop, but I just have the images right down over here for convenience. Let's do the other one over here, a bridge, and just drag it right into place and look, the beginnings of a gallery. How do I know it's a gallery? Let's go into list view, and we could see it's gallery right over here with two images, and yes, if we want to rename it, of course, we just go over here and rename it. Another nice enhancement is how links work. Let me show you. So let's say I want to 
add a link for this word over here, I'll go to the link tool, and here's what's different. You can now see some of the pages in my site that are listed here. Of course, I can type in the title over here. Suppose I want to link it to the group black page. I'll just put it in there like so. This is a lot easier and better looking than what we've ever had. And now if I want to edit that link, of course, I can change the text, the link. Here are some options over here that deal with opening in a new tab and adding no follow in my code. I'm just going to cancel out over here. Of course, if I want to unlink it, I can just click this here. And this is definitely new over here. If I click this, I can now copy that URL and paste it somewhere else. That's very handy. Here's also something that's new. Let's just go over here. And let's just say I want to add a link just like this. I'm going to go back into my link tool. And if I want to link to group block like so, you don't have to type in the words group block. It's there already. So that could be very handy and certainly a time saver. I just like the way the link interface works much better now. Finally, and maybe the most important, let's have a look over here in the page settings. And what I'm about to show you only applies to block themes is right over here. Templates. Look at this. So if I click on this over here, I can edit the template, that is the page template for all pages of the site. I can swap a template, that is I can pick a new template. And here are those templates that is suggested if I want to make a change. I don't. I can create a new template right from here. And I can actually review the template by clicking on here. This is all new. If not new, it's certainly improved and just makes working with pages and the templates which apply to those pages a lot easier. So what can we say about WordPress 6.5? It's certainly a very large release with something for everybody. It definitely focuses on improved user workflows in the site editor and of course the introduction to the font library. And it's certainly setting the stage for the two other major releases of WordPress this year, 6.6 .6 in July and 6.7 in November. I expect 6.6 .6 to really focus on polishing up the site editing experience and beyond.